live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. 55 degrees this morning. Yesterday was pretty picture perfect. Are we going to see it again? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday, February 25th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. So yesterday, like I said, picture perfect. It was beautiful. Did you make it out and about? I spent like three hours just sitting on my patio. Nice. And it was beautiful. It was okay. perfect. So here's the thing. I want to bring in a gripe. You make fun of me when I sit on the balcony and you're like, well, you didn't really go outside. Well, so I, if you're on the patio, are you really outside? I'm outside. Okay. Because at the same time, like I'll see something in the, in the, but the I'm, yard I, but and I'm like. I'm not on the outside when I'm on the balcony. Yeah, but you're almost like just like mm. peeking your head out the window at that point. Because what story do you live on? your apartment third okay yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm enjoying the sunshine yeah. Sarah Spivey though taking it four miles yeah power walk I nice. took a power walking class in um in college and it's stuck with me since then Love it. <laughs> Sarah's favorite fact about me is <laughs> no it's my favorite thing when she power walks it's only because we've seen behind the scenes I think yeah. it's I think you, you, you it, you're so serious when you do it well you yeah. have to be you have to be yeah, you have to get your uh, steps in pretty sure it's an Olympic sport isn't it it is, it is okay. and it's actually very hard it is so power to you thank you power walk to well you mm -hmm. well okay done. we are going to be in for another beautiful day around San Antonio if you want to power walk or sit on your patio or your balcony it's going to be great 55 degrees outside humidity is a little higher at the moment but you look out to New Braunfels it's 52 it's in the 40s in Hondo 46 degrees 58 in Del Rio and 54 in Rock Springs but take a look at today's highs we're going to be at 82 today in San Antonio Take a look out west. Del Rio close to 90 today, close to 90 in Laredo. So it is going to be a warmer day than average, not only here, but across the nation. And I've got to look ahead to uh, a bit of a temperature roller coaster in the week ahead. We're going to be warm for a few days before temperatures struggle to get out of the 50s. Details on when that cold front will get here coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, detectives are investigating how a bullet went through a bedroom wall at a home that ultimately killed a woman. So this happened a little after midnight on the city's south side near I-35 and Highway 90. SAPD says a man in his 60s allegedly heard a noise in the backyard and told police he went to grab his gun. In the process of retrieving the pistol, it set off and the bullet went through his mother's bedroom wall, striking her in the chest. EMS tried to save her, but were unsuccessful. Now, homicide detectives are looking into the matter, and it's unclear at this time if the son will face charges. And San Antonio police searching for a driver. They say hit a pedestrian and then drove off. So take a look at your screen. This happened a little after 2 this morning. This is downtown, the intersection of Austin Street and 9th Street. Officers were at that intersection actually for a separate crash when the driver of a red pickup drove through the scene, hit a pedestrian. Uh, investigators telling us the driver took off. Officers not able to stop them. The victim is expected to recover. But right now, police are still searching for the red Ford pickup truck. If you have any information, you're asked to call SAPD immediately. Well, outside of Houston this week, a Texas judge says Barbers Hill ISD is allowing to punish a black student who wears his hair in long locks. And this action will not violate Texas's new Crown Act. So the law hit the books last September to prevent hairstyle discrimination based on hair texture or protective styles associated with race. The Texas Tribune reports the school district argued it can still enforce its policy that prohibits men from having long hair, even if it's tied back. George's lawyer says protective styles are only possible with long hair. Darrell says he just wants to spend the rest of his junior year with his friends, but can't because of his hair. It just, it just makes me feel angry, very angry that, you know, throughout all these years, throughout all the, all the fighting for the black history that we've, that we've already done, we still have to do this again and again and again is, is ridiculous. Those on the other side of this argument have declined to comment in light of the ruling. George will remain assigned to in-school suspension, which he has been in since August. And this weekend marks two years since Russia's full-scale invasion into Ukraine. And of course, we have a Russian or a Ukrainian community here in San Antonio. And so, Ukrainian citizens coming together at City Hall, local citizens 
holding a peaceful rally showing support for Ukraine and their fight against the Russian invasions. Now, Ukrainians at the rally say the last two years have been especially tough, sending a message making sure their country is not forgotten. We've noticed that a lot of people getting fatigued and tired about the war, and we don't have so much supporter when we had when the full-scale invasion started. Now, we've done a lot of stories with local Ukrainians who say the safety of their loved ones depends partly on help from the United States government. Now, they're keeping a close eye on the current aid bill that is currently stalled in Congress. In your morning headlines, an update in the Middle East. The United States and Britain launched a series of strikes against Houthi targets in Yemen on Saturday. This was all in response to the Houthis' continued attacks against commercial and naval vessels near the Red Sea. Military officials say the strikes hit 18 targets, including weapons storage facilities and radars. This is the fourth time the U.S. and its international partners launched an attack together on the Iran-backed rebel group. Overall, the Houthis have launched 45 attacks since mid-November against vessels in that region. And a New York jury ruling that Wayne LaPierre, who headed the NRA, should pay back $4.3 million. So the jury found the group, the National Rifle Association, mismanaged its charitable funds by failing to rein in top executives from diverting millions of dollars for their own personal use. The verdict also ruled that the NRA filed false statements in their annual reports. Now, LaPierre was accused of mismanaging the charitable funds on lavish trips, no-show contracts, and other questionable expenses. A judge will determine whether to permanently bar him from future leadership roles in an upcoming bench trial. A new CNN poll found President Biden's job approval rating stands at 39% and 57% disapprove of the job he's doing. Biden's national approval rating has been largely stable, remaining in the high 30s or low 40s for more than a year. And now to his potential rival in the upcoming election, former President Donald Trump winning a decisive victory in South Carolina primary last night, beating challenger Nikki Haley and he beat her in her own state. But as ABC's J.O. Bryan reports, Haley is vowing to continue to fight on. Nikki Haley vowing to fight on in the Republican presidential primary despite a double-digit loss to former President Donald Trump on her home turf in South Carolina. And I'm grateful that today is not the end of our story. Trump beating Haley in a state where she successfully ran for governor twice. A decisive victory for the former president who campaigned little in the Palmetto State ahead of the primary. There's never been a spirit like this, and I just want to say that I have never seen the Republican Party so unified as it is right now. Trump's win coming as he faces criticism for these comments made a day before the primary using his four pending criminal cases in an attempt to appeal to black voters. And I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing. Haley calling Trump's remarks disgusting to ABC's Rachel Scott. That's the offensiveness that's going to happen every day between now and the general election, which is why I continue to say Donald Trump cannot win a general election. He won't. Haley's campaign is already turning its attention to beyond here in South Carolina to Michigan, whose primary is next week, and then the 15 states that will vote on Super Tuesday in early March. But polls show she's trailing Trump by double digits in each of those states, too. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Charleston, South Carolina. And here are a few reminders now that early primary voting is officially underway in Texas. That early voting period will run until March 1st. That's this upcoming Friday. Then Election Day is Tuesday, March 5th. We have more information on voting locations and a sample ballot that you can look at right now on our website, KSAT.com. Time is 6.09, 55 degrees. After the break, from Beyonce to using a plane to commute to class. Oh, I've read the story. We have your latest Absurd. consumer news. Man's a hero. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 55 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We know a lot of people out and about early this morning. Some people are headed to church. If anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. 
Good morning and welcome back. Apple releasing its latest shot on iPhone film. This is so amazing to me. Although, Sarah Costa, she shoots a lot of her stories on iPhone. Everything on the iPhone. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, but this one capturing the rehearsal and performance of Usher's Super Bowl halftime show. The director used 40 iPhones. Oh my God. So you need 39 more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, showcasing the capabilities of the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max models. Now, the Wait, just look at this shot for a second. And there it is. That's really like it's incredible. I mean, it, it's really. This is cool. Uh huh. But it's not just like he was there with the iPhone in his hand. He right. had the stabilizers. He All had the, the gadgets. Yeah. Equipment. So the phones were mounted all across the stage. They were on yeah. various instruments, like Sarah was saying, a stabilizer, which keeps the phone stable. There you go. And get this, they were even attached to some of the performers. Very cool. Beyonce made history this week with her new song, Texas Hold'em. It's a jam. Jam, debuting at number one on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart. This makes her the first woman to have topped both the Hot Country and Hot R&B Hip Hop Song chart since the list started in 1958. Wow. Queen B. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the story I was talking about earlier. A Canadian student so horrified by the rent prices he actually commutes to classes at University of British Columbia by plane twice a week. Tim Chen says the 600 mile flight between campus and his home in Calgary is actually saving him money compared to what he would spend on rent. Look at that, the numbers on your screen right there. Wow, 1,200 per month, what was it 2,100? Mm -hmm. Saving. So 1,200 on flights, 2,100 is what he would be spending on an average one bedroom in Vancouver. Yeah, so he tells CNN he's even seen UBC students living in vans when unable to afford rent. Got three hours of class in total. Um, after the class, I jump back to the bus and go back to the airports. All right, so Vancouver actually continues to lead the way as Canada's most expensive city for renters, while finding a place to rent is even more difficult with just, at this, a 0.9% vacancy rate. That means 99.1% occupancy rate. Mm. But Tim says it's a routine that gives him plenty of time to focus on his studies from the air. It, I, I mean, financially it makes sense. Of course, he also gets to live with his family, so everyone wins. Right. I mean, but you do miss, like, the on-campus experience. That would be the only, but if you're saving right. that much money. I mean, you're saving $900 a month. You theory. know, I've seen um, a girl who does this. She lives in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. She flies to New York twice a week to save on rent. That makes sense, because I assume rent prices in New York City probably comparable to Vancouver. Right. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the weather. Yes, it is going to be another beautiful day. We are going to be looking at temperatures really warm but comfortable because humidity will stay pretty low today. But by tomorrow morning, the humidity will be noticeable. Let's take a look outside with live cam. At the airport, it's 55 degrees. At Stinson, 53. Kelly, 49. JBSA Randolph, it's 56 degrees this morning. So cool start. 52 in New Braunfels, 50 in Yavaldi, 58 in Del Rio, 58 in Catula, and 59 in Laredo. Getting closer to the border today, highs are going to be near 90 degrees. It's going to be a warm one out uh, toward the border. As for our KSAT 12-hour forecast here in San Antonio, steadily rising, 66 at 10. Mostly sunny skies today, 75 a day, a lot like yesterday, just a couple of degrees warmer. High temperature this afternoon, 82 degrees. It'll be a mild evening with temperatures in the 70s and 60s after sunset. But there is one caveat to the forecast today. Winds will be gusty at times. We'll see a few gusts up to 20 20, 25 miles per hour around San Antonio throughout the day, and the winds will be from the south. Why is that important? Well, because humidity will be rising near the Gulf of Mexico today, and with the south wind, we'll be pulling in uh, higher humidity. You can see that right now, dew points are pleasantly low in the 50s, but by tomorrow, those dew points will be in the 60s. That's because there's a high pressure system right over the Gulf of Mexico. Air around a high moves in a clockwise fashion, so this is directing our winds from the south. And as we head into the day tomorrow, continuing to see Gulf moisture move into south central Texas and even up into north Texas as well. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means we'll have morning fog and clouds tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning as well. But before it stays humid for too long, we are going to be seeing a cool front moving through on Wednesday. And this cold front will make it cooler and drier for the second half of the 
the week. How much cooler? Well, the next couple of days we're going to be warm. We're going to be in the mid 80s tomorrow, mid 80s on Tuesday as well. That front arrives on Wednesday, so temperatures will tumble in the afternoon. And then by Thursday, our highs are going to only be in the 50s. It's going to be fairly chilly on Thursday before we see temperatures rebound into the 70s by the weekend. So a big swing in temperatures throughout the week today as uh, this week rather as far as rain chances go it does not look great for rain again the next couple of days when we're in the 80s it's going to be dry other than some perhaps morning fog maybe some mist but generally going to be just fairly foggy then by Wednesday that front moves through and we only have a 20% chance on Thursday for an isolated shower cold mornings temperatures in the 40s on Thursday and Friday morning but we are not going to hit freezing this week and in fact we are uh, already passed when we usually see our average last freeze in San Antonio. Uh, and I think it's a fairly safe bet around San Antonio. Do your planting, do things like that. Up in the hill country, it's a little bit later for the average last freeze. So Wait. yeah, closer to mid-March. I'll show the, the average last freeze in your neighborhood coming up in a bit. Yeah, I say seeds now. Yeah, maybe for sure. transplants in like a week or two. That's a great plan, Sarah. That's a great plan. Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Sarah. <laughs> okay, time now, just about 620, 54 degrees. We'll be right back. Happening today, the city and the MLK Commission's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. event, Working Beyond the March, is going on at Pittman Sullivan Park. The event, organized after the annual MLK mark, remember, was canceled last month because of the weather. The weather is better, but the passion and the love from that day to today is still the same, if not even more. It is a blessing to see this going on during Black History Month, and we just pray that it continues to go on past this month and in, in future months and years to come. Today's event is going on from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Pittman Sullivan Park off of South New Braunfels Avenue and MLK Drive. I was just telling Max, I cannot believe it was that cold. Right. For the for the march, and it, it wasn't feel yeah. that long ago. <laughs> it was not that long ago, and it, it wasn't necessarily the cold. It was the dangerous icy conditions. Yeah, and they had to cancel it all. And I'm glad that they were out and about. And honestly, I'm glad that they got beautiful weather. Right, right. I yeah, and this is fantastic. Seeing everyone out and about, all of the booths, all the families out there. I mean, look at that. It's fantastic. All right, time now. Just about 6:24, 54 degrees. A town that many of you may be familiar with has gotten lots of recognition this week. Whoa. I'm going to tell you why after the break. All right, just east of San Antonio, New Braunfels, called it, has been named 2024's <laughs> top Texas destination by Texas Travel Awards. Spots around New Braunfels also swept other categories, winning another nine awards. The Phoenix Saloon, Best Bar, the Dolly Cottages, Best Instagrammable Spot, Love that that's a category. Mm -hmm. Also, honored, look at this, Green Historic District and the iconic music venue, Green Hall. I love green. I love it. Okay, and while New Braunfels is a very popular tubing spot, the San Marcos River also hosts people wanting to float as spring break, or excuse me, spring break approaches. Yes, spring yeah, break. Spring break. <laughs> San Marcos City Council has voted to ban disposable drink containers oh. in the San Marcos River and riverfront parks. This ban will take effect May 1st. I guess it's for summer break. Officials say the San Marcos rules are less restrictive than New Braunfels can ban, which has banned all disposable containers. Disposable food containers are still allowed in the San Marcos River. I want to say something. Myra Arthur posted something on Instagram yesterday mm -hmm. about all the trash that end up in our riverbeds and creeks. Mm -hmm. It was, and I see it all the time when I right. walk. Just if you're in, you can go and enjoy, I, I'm, I'm such a proponent, go enjoy nature, Yeah. but leave it better than you found it. That's a great point. Yeah. Right. I mean, it made me sad to see all that trash. That sure. A shout out to Garrett Berenger. He was at the Basura Bash last weekend. Put helping it clean it up. Look at that. Time now, just about 628, 54 degrees. If you were affected by the AT&T outages this week, the company has some good news for you. Ooh. That's a lot of people. <laughs> okay, we'll tell you about that coming up. And from Ken Paxson to school districts around the state, we have the latest what is happening around Texas. That's after the break. 
Good morning and welcome back. Just about 6.32 this morning. It is Sunday, February 25th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And so we were talking the MLK March is this weekend because remember it was moved because right. the ice, the dangerous conditions, but right. just the juxtaposition of the weather that we saw from the initial day worked, to the last couple days, in their favor. it definitely worked in their favor. It right. has been gorgeous the last couple days and to see all those families out and about, not only yesterday, but today starts at 11 a.m. Sarah Spivey, what can they expect? Gorgeous weather, a few degrees warmer than yesterday, but again, a beautiful day to round out the weekend for us. And we're seeing the first light of the day here on live cam. Now, earlier I was able to actually see Venus there off in the distance, looked very beautiful. But outside right now it is a little on the cool side. It's 55 in San Antonio, 49 in Port S.A., 46 in Rio Medina, 55 in Bulverde. But we are going to warm very quickly today. I mean, by 10 it's going to be in the 60s, by noon, mid-70s, afternoon high, 82 degrees, mostly sunny, a little bit of a breeze, winds from the south at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20, and then the sun's going to set at 630 and it'll be a pretty mild evening. Hard to complain about today's weather. In the week ahead, though, we are going to see a big up and downs with the temperatures. So coming up, I've got a look at that and how it's really warm across a good portion of the nation. Details soon. Sarah, thank you. And your Texas headlines, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton suing a nonprofit organization that provides assistance to housing and migrants. Paxton is accusing Annunciation House in El Paso of human smuggling and operating a stash house and is seeking to have their license revoked. Annunciation House says it has provided hospitality to hundreds of thousands of refugees over the last 46 years. The Catholic organization calls the allegations unfounded and says Paxton's lawsuit is illegal, immoral, and anti-faith. Both parties are due back in court next month. And in Houston, a letter sent out to families and staff members this week states Spring Branch ISD will no longer have librarians for the upcoming school year because of budget cuts. Along with librarians, the district also forced to cut elementary and middle school counseling programs, athletic training staff, and even some central office positions. Now these cuts, it's gonna erase more than $22 million of the $35 million shortfall in the district's budget. Houston Chronicle reports Spring Branch ISD is just one of the many districts across the state, across the country, facing the aftermath from legislators declining to increase funding during the last legislative session. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reports Texas is passing on a summer lunch program for low-income families, costing a total of $450 million in federal tax dollars. The reports say the state has almost 4 million children eligible for the program, giving families that are qualified $120 per child through a preloaded card for three summer months. Texas Health and Human Services says the reason for the pass is because the department notified them six months before the program would start and it wasn't enough time to get it running. Everyone's excited about saving money. <laughs> It's true. Yep. Everyone is excited about saving money. And if you have property taxes you need to take care of, you know firsthand you got to do what you can to get those property taxes down. And the city wants to step up and help out. Now, the city and Bear County Appraisal District, they are hosting a series of property tax help sessions. This weekend actually marked the first of 14 meetings. New homeowner, Chrisana Calvin, talked with us about why she showed up for the first discussion to appeal your appraisal so that you, in case you feel that it's not the right assessment for your taxes, you can appeal it and don't be afraid to do it. You can, if you ain't done it in five years, you can start now and it can make a big difference on your taxes every year. Worst thing they can say is no. Calvin also telling us it only took about an hour for her to complete the process. If you want to learn more about your property taxes, we have a link with all the information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Okay, listen up. A lot of people were impacted by this earlier this week. AT&T is stating it will award billing credits mm. to those impacted earlier this week by the wireless outage. The company said late last night customers can receive credits for the average cost of a full day of service and can ask a service provider about those credits. AT&T covers almost 300 million people across the nation and struggled with outages for more than 10 hours on Thursday. It's still unclear how many people were actually affected. The company says the issue was caused by 
using the wrong process during a network expansion. Well, with inflation making it more and more difficult for Americans to keep up with payments and credit, Wallet Hub has released the latest report on the cities with the most people in financial distress. Let's take a look. The company compared 100 United States cities on factors such as average credit score, number of bankruptcies filed, and on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the most distressed, San Antonio ranking number 7 out of 100, meaning the Alamo City really feeling this burden. It's why we talk about inflation so much. Now Houston, though, coming in at number two, and if you look on your screen, Dallas, number five. Wallet Hub says San Antonio is number one in the country for the city with the most searches for loans. And here's a question. You don't have to answer this, Max, but do you have more emergency savings or credit card debt? That is a great question. If you say debt, well, like we just talked about, San Antonio not doing well in terms of financial stress. You have a lot of company. Inflation definitely taking a toll on so many families. So 12 on your side, Marilyn Moritz has a couple of money moves that you can make right now. Which do you have more of, credit card debt or emergency savings? Credit card debt. Probably emergency savings. Oh, wow. Uh, probably emergency savings as of right now. Credit card debt. I mean, yeah, but it, it's pretty equal. Their answers are no surprise. Bank rates latest survey found 36% of people have more credit card debt than savings for life's emergencies. That's the most ever. I mean, inflation a little bit, but yeah. Inflation. People are spending about 20% more than four years ago for the same stuff, especially those groceries. So they are saving less and charging more. And those doozy interest rates aren't helping. It's a balancing act for sure. On the one hand, you have your credit card debt. On the other, that emergency fund. So how can you tackle them both at the same time? Tracking your spending is really a, a critical part of getting a handle on your finances. You've got to know where the money is going uh, so that you know where you can cut back. Greg McBride is Bankrate's chief analyst. He says, ideally, your emergency savings can cover six months of living expenses. It takes time to get there. The best way to do this, set up a direct deposit from your paycheck into a dedicated savings account and do that now. A small amount is better than none. The key is to create the saving habit. As for those credit card bills. You're carrying a balance and trying to get out of debt. Consider the 0% or other low rate balance transfer offers. Just be sure to pay it off without piling on more debt. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, just about 640, 55 degrees. Up next, the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh, oh my so gosh, adorable. it looks like baby Scooby. All right, they have a furry little friend that needs a new home today. All right, so speaking of your dog, Scooby, did you take him for a walk yesterday? I didn't get to, around to walking him, but we just, both sister and Scooby, we were just out in, in the patio. Nice. Just soaking up the sun. Goals. All right, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Is today going to be a good day to take the dogs on a walk? Like, you you going to bury your face and be shy until you know we want to see your cute little face there. I know, look. Kim's here look. from the San Antonio Humane Society. Look, look, oh, that look at face. that. I mean, that just melts you. Who's I that know. Uh, this is Bear. Mm -hmm. So Bear had a brother on heart uh, last week, but Bear is of a three-month-old shepherd mix. Um, also, they have two sisters at the shelter, too. Oh, okay. So there's a total of four of them that came in. But, yeah, so Bear's... The, Bear's comfortable. The, the, the brother had the, the, the real yes, soft, fuzzy yeah. kind of look, and he's got this He's got a little bit more shorter, shorter coat. Fur, but yeah. he's got to be a decent sized dog. He is. 30, 40 he pound is. There. Somebody that can go good play little, with you. Uh, good little playmate, yeah. Yes, walking, running outside, um, yeah. Yep. And so, plenty of chew toys perfect. as yeah. well. All right, can't believe it's all the time, but you are talking <laughs> Fiesta. We metals, are. Look at our Fiesta medals. All right. <laughs> So the cat metal is probably, what camera should I point these at? And I don't know if you can zoom in, but the cat is holding a chicken <laughs> on, on a stick. stick. <laughs> Love that. And you can get these online yes. or, or by yes. here in person, Yes, yes, right? you can come to our location, uh, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 12 to 7, and we have those for sale. So they're $10 each. Um, all the proceeds go back to help our pets like Bear and Heart. And you can only buy them at, there at the... They're in online. Yes, oh, and you online can go too. online. Okay. Yes, yes, and on our website. While you're there, maybe do a little bit of shopping if you yes. need uh, some pet supplies, some... Beds, toys, bed. whatever. Mm -hmm. Chew toys for chew this guy. Toys. Lots of chew toys. Okay, the cat with the chicken on this. I love that. <laughs> 
That's the medals already. If you like more information about these medals, everything else over there at the San Antonio Humane Society, mm -hmm. go to sahumane.org or stop by 4804 Fredericksburg Road just outside 410. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I think Sarah Spivey should adopt Bear. So cute. All right, San Antonio Pets Alive will be at the San Antonio Home and Garden Show again today. Oh, nice. It'll be from noon to 8 p.m. at the Alamo Dome on their website, sanantoniopetsalive.org. There is a link for two free tickets to the show. Just type in the promo code PETS that's on your screen right now. There'll be lots of, of course, adoptable pets there and will be ready to join their forever families today. There's no more room at the Costa residence yeah. for a third dog? No, I have two two, two big dogs. And Bear is there. definitely going to get bigger. Yeah, Bear looks like he's going to be scooby size, mm. who is about 65 pounds. Wow. It's, and that's considered a medium dog, not a large dog yet. Okay. Yeah. We could get a dog eventually. You should. We have a yard now. Have Go yard. on nice walks. You said you walked four miles yesterday. Yeah, and Nora, to be honest with you, Nora, my cat, she's she's fine with dogs. Scooby yeah. loves Nora. She's hung out with Scooby before. <laughs> They're cat brother sister. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Outside right now, you can see in the weather setup that it is nice and quiet around Texas this morning. And not only is it Fernando's laughing at me. Not only is it quiet around Texas, but it's quiet around the nation, too. There's really only a few areas with some precipitation. Uh, up in the northern Rockies, we've got some snowfall in northern Montana. But generally, uh, again, a quiet weather pattern across the nation. We've got this high pressure system over Mexico that's kind of keeping things fairly dry for us. And not only that, it's keeping a good portion of the nation warmer than average. This is a look at the high temperatures today across the nation. It's going to be well in the 80s for most of us in Texas and in the 60s in the Central Plains. While that may seem nice and cool, it's actually much warmer than average for those folks. In fact, here's a look at how much warmer than average the weather will be. With a high temperature in the 60s, that's about 24 degrees warmer than what they usually see in Omaha. And then here in Texas, again, we're going to be some 15 to 20 degrees warmer than average with those highs in the 80s. So a very spring-like day across the nation for us and we're going to be warm over the next couple of days too. 85 on Monday, 84 on Tuesday. Then we do see a cold front move through on Wednesday, and this front really is going to knock temperatures down by quite a bit. We're going to be looking at temperatures falling into the 50s for the highs on Thursday. So Thursday will be a chilly day. So you go from you're needing your t-shirts to needing your jackets. So don't put up those jackets just yet. Outside right now, a beautiful view as the sun is rising. Temperatures are chilly. It's 55 in San Antonio, 55 in Bernie, 47 in Rio Medina, and 46 in Hondo. But as for the forecast today, sunny skies and quickly warming. By 9, we'll be in the 60s. By noon, we'll be in the mid-70s. Notice that winds, too, will be from the south. Fairly breezy, 15 miles an hour at times with gusts up to 20, 25 miles an hour. The high temperature will be 82 degrees. Humidity, though, will be pleasantly low today. That will not be the case Tomorrow and Tuesday, humidity will be on the rise. That's why we've got that south wind increasing humidity so that by tomorrow and Tuesday, it's going to be fairly muggy outside, especially in the mornings when we'll have areas of fog. And then that front moves through on Wednesday, dries out our atmosphere, becomes more pleasant outside, but noticeably muggy on Monday and Tuesday. As for temperatures today, again, highs, it's going to be a warm one. Near 90 degrees out toward the border, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Lorraine, but around San Antonio, low 80s, low 80s in the Hill Country, 80 in Bernie, Bulverde, 82 in Kerrville, 80 in Seguin, 83 in Floresville, 84 in Pleasanton, 85 in Yavaldi, and it'll be 80, uh, 80 degrees in the Holotus area. Again, taking a look at that forecast, warm the next couple of days with morning fog and some clouds. Then that front moves through on Wednesday and temperatures tumble. We do not have a good chance for rain this week, only a 20% chance on Thursday for a few isolated showers. And again, notice, even though it's going to get chilly with mornings in the 40s, I do not anticipate a freeze. In fact, our last freeze on average is in late February. So as you said, Sarah, you said plant seeds now mm -hmm. and then and then the um, transplants like your perennials or transplant vegetables like tomatoes, you know, first week of March, mid-March. Great advice. Great advice, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, time now, just about 6.50, 54 degrees. After the break, we have a sneak peek at Zendaya's new movie. And Jenna Ortega in a remake of Beetlejuice. Good morning and welcome back. So in entertainment news today, Zendaya plays on and off the tennis court in the star of Wednesday, the Netflix show. Dishes on another spooky story and the band U2 has a new documentary. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. You think that tennis is about expressing yourself, doing your thing. You don't know what tennis is. What is it? Here's your latest look at Zendaya in Challengers. She plays a tennis phenom turned coach, caught between two players, her husband and her former boyfriend. Challengers opens in theaters April 26th. <laughs> Jenna Ortega has confirmed her role in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The actress tells Vanity Fair magazine she plays Astrid, the daughter of Winona Ryder's Lydia from the first film. The sequel is due in theaters in September. It was a very bright shining light, Sarajevo. And they needed to kill that light. Without electricity, running water, the urge for art amplified. We had this wonderful scene, having a disco in the middle of the war. It's the only thing that kept us going. Kiss the Future looks at an underground community that used music and art to affect change amid the siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian War. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck produced the documentary, which shows how U2 had nightly satellite interviews with Bosnians during the siege, raising awareness, then held a promised concert in Sarajevo after the war ended. Kiss the Future is in AMC theaters and on Paramount Plus later this year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Heads up, Santico's has a deal going on today. There are select showings for just $5. Nice. Popcorn for five bucks, snacks, some drinks, and more. Santicos recently had those technical issues that shut down its entire operation for a few days. And while they never clarified what the technical issues actually were, they are now offering this deal. Let's Probably making up for right. One of my favorite theaters in town. Absolutely. Yeah. Time now, 6:55, 4 degrees. We'll be right back. Good Sunday morning. Coming up here on GMA, Donald Trump declared the winner in Saturday's South Carolina GOP primary. We're breaking down what his victory means as Nikki Haley vows to continue on in the race and the insights from exit polls, possible implications about the general election. Plus, breaking overnight from the Middle East, the U.S. and allied forces launching more airstrikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. What we've learned about those attacks this morning. And back here, here at home, why some airlines are changing travel policies impacting baggage fees and the ways you earn awards miles. We're helping make sure you're prepared ahead of spring break. That's all coming up right here on GMA. We'll see you then. Okay, if you plan on stepping out today, another round of closures on the far northwest side. TxDOT has shut down three cloverleaf interchanges at Loop 1604 and I-10. If you experienced a backup last weekend, it was only one, now it's three. So that's going to be going on until 5 a.m. tomorrow. Now you can scan the QR code right now. It's on your screen. It'll take you to an article on KSET.com. It gives you all the details on detours in the area and a map outlining what the interchange will look like through the weekend. All right, it is cool this morning in the 50s, 53 in New Braunfels, 52 in Hondo, 54 in Gonzales, 48 in Yavaldi, but 55 in San Antonio. We will warm into the 80s, though, today by 1066, 75 at noon, 82 for the high, a little breezy at times with gusts up to 20 miles per hour from the south. That brings in more humidity so that tomorrow and Tuesday we start off with morning fog. It's going to be warm tomorrow and Tuesday. Then a front arrives on Wednesday, and we see temperatures tumble into the 50s for the highs on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. We'll see you back here at AM. See y'all at 8.